Today we're going to discuss the science behind some science fiction. The subject up for study today is the hoverboard from Back to the Future 2. Given this recent hoax with Tony Hawk, and the fact that we have only a little bit over a year to start dressing like this, I figured I'd talk a little bit about what it might take to build a hoverboard and why we don't have one currently on the market. Next year is the 100 year anniversary of the first invention that would lead us to the modern day hovercraft. In 1915, Austrian Dagobert Müller invented the first water effect vehicle, which used propulsion and something like our modern day airplane wings called an airfoil to create lift. The idea to use a cushion of air for the vehicle to sit on came later in 1926 by Konstantin Eduardovich Tsiolkovsky. Following later designs by Finnish, American, and British engineers, we arrived at the first practical design for a hoverboard in the 1950s by Sir Christopher Cockerell. The principle under which all of these vehicles work is that they use a walled off cushion of continuously flowing air for the vehicle to sit on. And while the science is sound and still in continued use today in hovercrafts on land and water, Marty's hoverboard obviously didn't have a skirt on the bottom. So if the hoverboard didn't use a physical force such as air to stay afloat, then how could it have worked? To me, there are two obvious solutions, gravitational or electromagnetic waves. And herein lies the problem for modern day scientists. While we know quite a bit about electromagnetism and gravity, we aren't really sure why they work the way that they do. This means that manipulating these forces can sometimes be very difficult or even impossible. To me, the most obvious solution to build a hoverboard would be gravitational. You just put something on the bottom of the hoverboard that creates a force downward on the earth equal to the gravity in that spot. It's pretty easy, right? Nope. Actually, with our current understanding of gravity, it's impossible. We really only know two main things about gravity. It exists in all matter, and it falls off as one over the distance squared. That is to say that we can judge how gravity is going to change as you get closer to or further away from an object. Since Einstein, physicists have been working to create a functional and practical model of gravity. Today we have two theories, string theory or M theory and loop quantum gravity. These are incredibly difficult disciplines and neither one is functional or practical. The next option is probably more practical and definitely closer to being within our grasp. You might actually have heard of it, it's called quantum levitation. It's based on a principle called the Meissner effect and is one of the coolest things I know of involving magnets. The typical magnetic field looks just like this, I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times. Well when you subject a magnetic material or another magnet to that field, they get incredibly complicated and difficult to see. Something really interesting happens though when you cool certain metals down to a really low temperature. And I mean really, really, really low only a few kelvins, they become what's called a superconductor. That is to say, the resistance inside the metal drops to absolute zero. If you were to put an electric current into that metal, it would travel forever without slowing down, let alone stopping. Becoming a superconductor has a strange effect in a magnetic field. It actually repels magnetic fields, and you end up with what's called quantum levitation. The magnetic field lines actually travel outside of the superconductor and lock it in place. There's another effect we see called quantum locking. If you make the superconducting material incredibly thin, the magnetic field will actually break through the material in tiny little quantum packets and lock it in place. You can see in this video what that looks like. So what if we, we got here? So we have quantum locking. The, the superconductor is locked in space and it stays wherever I put it. You see, this is quantum trapping. The two main problems with using quantum levitation is that the superconductor has to be so cold that it's extremely expensive to keep it at that temperature. The super colliders, like in CERN or Fermilab, spend millions of dollars a month in electricity to keep their metals cooled down to superconducting state. Number two is that it only works over a magnetic field. But you'd say to me, I know from your last video that the Earth has its own magnetic field. Why don't we just float it on top of that? That's not a bad idea, except that the Earth's magnetic field is incredibly weak, just enough to turn a needle on a compass. So we don't currently have a way of building a hoverboard that Michael J. Fox would be comfortable using. But that doesn't mean we won't, and soon. And remember, it doesn't take a scientist to be interested in things, to do research, or to have an idea. If you like this kind of stuff, do research on it. Find out how it works. It very well could be that an idea for the hoverboard from Back to the Future 2 comes from you. And as always, if you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button below. Follow us over at aggressivecomics.com or over on Facebook or fightforscience.org.